Earthlings, welcome back to First Contact Radio. How you doing today? It is the 17th of February, right here. So we see that we have a moon sign in Aquarius. Our sun sign is also in Aquarius, so double Aquarius today. Double Aquarius means double air, because Aquarius is an air sign. Aquarius is the sign that deals with uh, futuristic times when we think about the age of Aquarius that we're looking forward to. It's all of those ideals that we thought were going to happen with the age of Aquarius. Uh, it is the tarot card of the star, which is all about learning to bring our hopes from the inside to the outside. The way in which we do that is we have to connect to the inside first in order to bring that expression out. Aquarius is an air sign, so we have a lot of air movement activity between the words and the actions that are going on. So we have the words and the actions, activity, air underneath the surface on the unconscious mind, and the conscious mind is the same. We also have, you know, science as part of this whole idea as well. So a lot of great ideas going on with Aquarius, and we've got Aquarius all rested today and in tomorrow as we go into the new moon. Today is also the last day of the sun sign of Aquarius because it changes tomorrow to Pisces. So let's take a look at some of the aspects that are going on today. All right, uh, aspects to deal with. We've had Saturn jump into the mix a little after 1 a.m., about 1.16 a.m. And Saturn brings discipline. Just remember, keywords for each one of these signs, okay? Saturn, discipline, or focus. So focus was brought to these ideals. Sex, a sextile means there's a nice, good, positive flow of energy amongst them. Another sign is a trine, which is even a more advantageous flow of energy. And then there's a square, which is a block, a lesson. So we have these trines, a good flow of energy. So an opportunity to focus. And then as we move into the afternoon, 4.29 p.m., Uranus jumps into the mix. And Uranus brings surprises, unexpected events, things of this nature. So that's a good thing, and that brings into the Aquarius, because sometimes we just go from moment to moment to moment, and these little surprises help keep us moving along. So we have the surprises going on later this afternoon, 7.59 p.m. We've got the old teeter-totter. One side we got Jupiter, one side we have Aquarius. So on the one side, Jupiter is expanding everything out. Jupiter's uh, Aquarius is on the other side, wanting to look forward, look to that moment, look to ways in which we bring that inside out. Okay, and so that's what's going on over the course of today. On the Jewish calendar, it's 28 Shavat. 28 Shavat, daily thought for today, teaching despite himself. He alone knows what he has done with life. In the privacy of his own home, he looks in the mirror and sees himself, and from head to toe, things are not good. So he says, I should teach others. I should provide guidance. And we tell him, yes, because that is your place upon the planet. We live in a time when all those who know Aleph must teach Aleph, and those who know what comes after Aleph must teach that too. And God above, who formed you and put you into the here and the now, he knows who you are and how you are and what you are capable of accomplishing. If he believes in you, you must as well. 
I have a sliver of a moon. The new moon comes tonight. Tonight into tomorrow. Solar wind currently at 429.3 kilometers per second. Planetary K index is unsettled at the moment in the 4 range. Big corona hole up top, a big one on the bottom, a notification that around the 20th through the 21st we are going to get hit from the wind blowing off of these coronal holes. M-class flare possibilities at 10, X-class at 1, geomagnetic storm activities low, dropping from 30 to 15 in the mid latitudes, from 15 to 20 in the high latitudes. And up in the sky tonight, it says Mars is just 2 degrees above Venus in the west-southwest at dusk. The remain at least this close for the next 9 days. The shadow of Jupiter's moon Io crosses Jupiter's face from 6.13 to 8.31 p.m. Eastern Time. It's following along 16 minutes behind itself to which is visible around 9.10 p.m. Eastern Time. Callisto disappears into oculation behind Jupiter's western limb. From 10.35 to 1.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Europa's shadow crosses Jupiter following 35 minutes behind Europa itself. And Jupiter's great red spot comes from the view around the planet's celestial eastern edge by midnight Eastern Time to reach the planet's central meridian around 1.47 a.m. All right, there you go. That's our cosmic weather, the energy we're dealing with today. Why? Because everything is energy. And when we look at it that way and understand that, it makes all the difference in the world. UFO News is up next. I have a bunch of stories. Let's do it. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk, thank you very much. I have a whole lot of stories for you today, so let's get into it. First one here, UFO instantly appears to move across sky while collecting orbs. This goes back to 2009 in New Jersey. Here we have one object and another object inside it. This is the moment a man records a flying saucer behind his house, and suddenly a huge tubular-shaped UFO appears very low to the surface and disappears while another appears from thin air with a speeding object shooting from it. This is great footage, very rare and unexplained. The witness says this is the world's best UFO video because it was made during the daylight. The UFO is not very cl is very close, not more than 5,000 feet. The UFO is harvesting something from our atmosphere at 111. You will see the ship loading a luminous object into its bottom. I believe the orb is a spotter and the other large craft is a harvester. Watch in HD, go frame by frame, download if you can. You'll see the ships are under attack by fast-moving particles that travel horizontally from the right to the left. The ship's light rotates and changes color slightly when the weapon charge and discharges. It shoots a green plasma, hits several of the targets that are trying to hit it. Okay, it's a 1 minute 37 second video. Of course, as he says, when you enlarge the screen we're going to see much better there's another object right there I just you can see it just appeared into view it wasn't there a moment ago and there it is this is really good footage very good footage and uh, looks like there's something else maybe down here it's starting to come into view I don't know this one's definitely very good shot and what we're not seeing are all the particles around it, which we see when we enlarge the screen. So I'm going to encourage you to do that. February 15th, Santa Clara, California. There's the object in question. This is new footage of a triangle-shaped formation hovering in the night sky above Santa Clara. Sunday the 15th. Saturday the... F no, Sunday the 15th. Witness took this place at 1 at 11 p.m., I was heading southbound on the Lawrence Expressway and started filming this at the top of the bridge about Al Camino Riel. There was absolutely no sound when I saw the flying object. As I approached closer, it became very surprised. That's when I started speaking. This flying object had basically stopped in the air, was hovering very close to the house, basically hovering in a residential-like area. The area was right around Benton and Lawrence Expressway on the side towards the New Apple headquarters. I stopped filming because the wall protecting the residence area from the expressway blocked me. 
Okay, and what we have down here is a video that we can check out. Okay, the link to the video. Well, we just got a commercial, so we're just going to skip this. Let me jump on to the next one. You got the report. All right, here's uh, Papo Capital. Papo Capital. Let's say that five times, huh? Anyway, another capture. There it is right up there through the webcam. You use webcam. We have one available on First Contact Radio. You can just sit there and check it out and watch all day long. All right, uh, I found this UFO in the volcano act archives this morning. It was only a few hours old. So the dark cigar UFO over the volcano near the clouds. The object ma matches past UFO seen over the mouth that were also cigar shaped. Okay. Got a nice good uh, two minute 40 second video with Scott C. Waring describing what he saw and how he found this in the archives. All right, April or the 15th of February again. Okay, here's the Earth's moon. This is a fantastic capture by Crow 777, that's C R R O W 777 of YouTube. Captures several UFOs passing across the moon and their shape and size are short of extraordinary. He also is a writer for the examiner.com, takes this subject very seriously, so much so that he invested his own time and money into researching UFOs, we have to admire this progress. Okay, in this clip I show the results of a new image processing method which zoom in on small objects. In the video footage, bear in mind I have frozen the object in space. Blurry and jumpy frames give the illusion of morphing. This is not the case as is seen in the original footage. Alright, we have a 3 minute 45 seconds in which he goes over this process here. Okay, so I'm going to again suggest you check this out. Alright, let's see. Alright, I'm going to move on to the next story. UFO in photo baffles an ex skeptic. Queenstown man, Verdon Waghorn was a UFO skeptic until he photographed one. Now he wants to know if the truth is out there. There's the UFO that he captured. A fortnight ago he was f fossicking for rocks by the Dart River Bridge and the Glenorchy Routeburn Road. About noon he took 20 photos of the surrounding landscape to show his family. Looking through the images that evening, he noticed one showed a small dark shape in the western sky towards the Humboldt Mountains. He is sure he saw, neither saw nor heard an aircraft at that time and had been puzzling over the object ever since. In response to an Otago Daily Times inquiry, an Airways New Zealand spokeswoman confirmed the air traffic control had no record of the aircraft. In the area at that time, Mr. Wagner said the object appeared in only one of the photos, so he felt confident in ruling out that it was a speck of dirt or a small insect on the lens. He'd always been skeptical at UFOs, but now I sympathize with them. I'm sure there's a reasonable, rational explanation. I don't think it's green men from outer space, but whatever I look at it, I think it's such a weird shape. It doesn't look like a bird or a plane. It's got me baffled. Okay, there it is. kind of looks sort of like the Billy Meyer, the classic ones he used to take pictures of. Up on Mars, here we have what appears to be some sort of a ship. Okay, you can see it right in there. This is the more colorized, so you can see it better. This buried structure looks a lot like it landed on Mars' surface. This is a fantastic discovery in an actual ship that crashed. Okay. Maker of the video didn't give any good instructions and, and it was difficult, but the coordinates are above. I still cannot confirm in there. All right. One minute, seven seconds for the video. And it shows you. Uh, there we go. You definitely see something is there that is uh, not 
the norm. Okay, moving on. Up on Mars also, clear evidence of ancient city. This is the very same enlargement that you just viewed. All I have done is adjust the brightness, contrast, tint, sharpness, exposure, and saturation levels to make the objects more visible to the eye. No pixels were modified. Look once again for the geometric shapes at the bottom. Okay, so these are all nice filter adjustments. Not changing the pixels, just the coloration behind them. So you did this at a home with an ordinary computer. Just type crater hole in perspective looking west. So all the instructions on how to do this. This is year old, but if we do not learn from the past, we will be forced to repeat it. Here the person took regular Mars photos from the ESA, used the photo program to adjust the color, contrast, saturation, and so on until we can see the ancient surface of Mars as it once was. I've also seen this many times, and it's not a result of pixelation, which some assume is the cause at first glance. What you're looking at is the ancient foundation areas where structures were once built upon. They use this technique to identify ancient temples and buried tombs in Egypt. They also use similar techniques to find the lost Nazca lines and cities in Peru. ESA photo index has been mostly ignored and really deserves some serious attention by UFO researchers. Okay, eight minute video. And goes over this process of how it's done. So check it out because it's a good good way to continue your research. Now Here's a interesting story here because Obama's advisor right here was thought that was going to be the guy that was going to release the UFO info. At least that's what the UFO community was hoping. This really shows the depth of UFO alien secret in the U.S. There are some very serious and very influential trade agreements made with alien cultures enough to ignore the public desire to know the truth. No longer is America government of the people, by the people, for the people. Big Brother is in control. Technically incorrect, John Podesta, senior White House advisor who's leaving to reportedly head up Hillary Clinton's bid for the presidency, says his biggest regret on departing is not securing the release of the UFO files. The notion of any government telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth is quaint in its optimism. However, those who believe that there are alien beings who have visited Earth and even partaken of the Burger King believes that the truth is out there somewhere. So, anyway, he's leaving. He didn't get a chance to do what he wanted to do. I'm going to leave this for you. But uh, just remember, you know, the White House had an opportunity to respond about UFOs. And they gave a very definite no, that there aren't any extraterrestrials. No, there hasn't been any evidence. I mean, stuff that really stands against what has already been discovered. They just pretty much dismissed all of it. So we just pretty much dismissed the White House and what they're saying in regards to UFOs because we know that they're lying. And why would we continue to believe the lies of those who are telling them? It doesn't make any sense. I, for one, will not be doing that. So we know that... Uh, you know, nothing's forthcoming because this guy here is a liar, right here. And this guy, well, we don't know his whole story other than he wanted UFOs to come out, but apparently this liar over here who was going to make us really transparent really wasn't quite telling the truth about that. See, I was nice. I only called him a liar. I didn't call him a jackass. See, I'm getting better. Um... When E.T. picks up the phone, what happens then? Good question. Well, here's the, uh, here's the story. What happens when E.T. acknowledges our calls? It will be one of the greatest moments in science and one of the greatest moments in history. After decades of searching, a signal from extraterrestrials received by a radio telescope on Earth. SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence analysts, quickly checked the transmission using other instruments and prepare to announce the great discovery. The media descends in the story, and soon millions of people around the world are reading the news. Then what? I wonder if they're going to look like this. These look like the extraterrestrials from that movie uh, Charlie Sheen was in. Remember that one, where they kind of snapped their legs back? And, well, no, their legs were running back the other way. Well, they were like this. Anyway. 
the artist rendition. It says exactly how the world would react to the discovery of extraterrestrial intelligence has been the subject of much speculation. There could be a mixture of excitement, fascination, fear, confusion, disbelief, indifference, and panic. Like emergency planners preparing for a catastrophe, scientists regularly assemble to consider ways that the world at large will respond to such an event and how to plan for the day when discovery comes. Psychologist and SETI scholar Doug Vakoc has been exploring this question for years and recently gathered an eclectic team to explore the issue. The result is a large and detailed book, Astrobiology, History and Society, which was recently published by the academic publisher Springer. A free preview of the book is released here online. Click that link. Scientists and journalists have struggled with this problem for a long time. One of the best ways to prepare for the discovery of life beyond Earth is to understand how we've dealt with the false alarms in the past, explains Vachot. History is rich with incidents when life beyond Earth was reported and widely believed. In the early 19th century, astronomer John Herschel reportedly discovered intelligent bat men on the moon. The news spread wildly and the public was energized. There's only a problem. It was a hoax. More to the article. Good question. What will happen? Well, what do you think will happen? Here we have a situation where plenty of Americans, plenty of people around the world have watched movies about extraterrestrials, know that they exist, they know our government's lying. Finally, when the government comes clean with this information, or even go beyond the government, finally when we get the word that all of this is real, I believe that people are going to take it all in stride and be very curious now to see what they look like, because they already know they exist. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Anybody who's been paying a little bit of attention knows that extraterrestrial phenomena is a real situation going on. The only ones who don't know are, th are those who aren't paying attention to any of the information whatsoever. Perhaps they're not ready. Remember, Earth is in many ways like a classroom. There's people here of all different age groups. There are those which are young souls. They're not going to get the extraterrestrial phenomena they're not ready to deal with that. That's for the more advanced souls who've been on the planet who understand, which is a good percentage of the population. So we just need to allow those who are ready to understand, understand, and those who aren't, aren't. And we just need to discount what the government is saying on the issue because they're not going to tell you the truth. And anybody waiting for the government to tell you the truth, you're going to be waiting a long time. So you might as well just learn now if you haven't. You can't wait on your government. Your government's just going to keep delaying, keep lying, keep doing whatever they're going to do for their own particular agenda. That's just the way it works. Period. All right, let's uh, take a look at one last story here. BBC host a debate about Jesus and Buddha being extraterrestrials. Were Jesus and Buddha aliens? The BBC program debates the idea. A program aired on the British Broadcasting Corporation recently held a discussion as to whether or not major religious figures such as Jesus Christ and Buddha were from other planets. In a religion-focused series titled The Big Questions, host Nikki Campbell oversaw a discussion asking the query, Have beings from other planets guided our religions? Last month, NASA's Kepler Space Telescope identified another planet that might have right conditions for life, says Campbell. It will be no surprise to the follower of those religions who long believe that life, possibly as we know it, exists elsewhere in the galaxy. Life which has possibly exerted its influence here on planet Earth. Have beings from other planets guided our religions? The segment featured two groups, the Aetherius Society and the British Union of Spiritualist Society, which advocated for the theory that various religious figures, including Jesus, were aliens. We believe that various religious leaders from history have interplanetary origin, said Mark Bennett of the Aetherius Society. We believe that Jesus and Buddha came from Venus, that Sri Krishna came from Saturn and St. Peter came from Mars, and so on. The program also includes two people representing Christianity, a scientist who belongs to the Christ Church Southampton, and a bishop who opposed the theory. It's very clear, if you look at the Gospels, that there are only three answers to who Jesus is, said the scientist Wes Liz Weston. Either he's mad, or he's bad, he's trying to deceive us and his power comes from the devil, or he actually is who he's claimed to be and is the Son of God. 
none of those say that he was from Venus. Claims that Jesus might have been an alien are not exclusively made by groups like the Aetherius Society. Presbyterian minister Barry Downing has often credited phenomena in the Bible, including the coming of Jesus to extraterrestrial origins. In a rebuttal posted on the website Ancient Aliens Debunk, Frank Johnson clearly writes that the theory of Jesus being alien creates a few problems. No matter how you look at it, there is only one way possible that God, as revealed in the Hebrew Scriptures, could be an extraterrestrial, as most understand the term. Jesus cannot possibly be an extraterrestrial hybrid or other creature simply because he is one with God the Father. The Bible demonstrates that Jesus states that he and the Father are one. Okay, let's do a little bit of a, we'll do a little figuring out here. Real simple. God is not from planet Earth. God, though, participates on Earth. God is from off of planet Earth. That means God is alien to planet Earth. Okay, you getting the picture here? So, God is alien. And Jesus said that if you see him, you see the Father. So, if we know that God is alien to planet Earth, and Jesus, when we look at him, we're seeing God, then Jesus would also be alien to the Earth. Okay? See how these fit together? So, we have God and Jesus, who are not part of this Earth. Even Jesus said, I am of, on this world, not of it. I'm in this world, not of it. It's a no-brainer, okay? All of these religious and spiritual teachers came elsewhere. I mean, you've seen the pictures. I've plan put them up plenty of time of, from the 15th century, you have the one, the Annunciation, where Mary is in a room and there's a beam of light coming down from a UFO. Those are other images which suggest that when Jesus was born, there was a light shining from a UFO down into his crib. Uh, plenty of talk out there that Jesus is Pleiadian. Here this recent article talks about perhaps from Venus. You know, either way, there's a lot of information out there, except for those who don't want to know, then of course for them there's nothing, because if you tell them something, it might be too much for their mind. So we have to keep it simple for some of the people who don't want to stretch their brains too far. All right, that's UFO News. I will be back. Stay tuned. Come into our circle, great spirit. Fill our souls with peace. Continuing on, you know, I just before I continue on, I just saw something silly today. It actually says that a uh, White House spokesperson, State Department, I believe, uh, said that the problem with ISIS is they just need jobs. So apparently Obama doesn't want to defeat ISIS. He wants to hire them. Yeah. That's out there. That's one of the news stories that's out there. Believe it or not, he wants to hire them. Yet again, for anybody wondering if Obama is Muslim and has sympathy to Muslims and maybe is connected with the Muslim Brotherhood, here might be another clue. Okay? For those who are uh, slow at getting the clues and putting them together, this is another one. Okay, put this in the mix with all of the other ones that say Obama's not an American, he's Muslim. Now we're going to throw this into the mix. I, I know, if this was a scale that was weighing down, this side would be so heavy, but some people don't notice. Some people have to be hit over the head with the information until they finally understand what's going on. You and I, we know what's going on. It's just par for the course. That's what he's going to do. He sympathizes with them because he's one of them. 
He doesn't believe in America. He doesn't like America. He doesn't like white people. He doesn't like the benefits we have in here. He's a Muslim. He's, as far as I'm aware, he's the Antichrist, unless proven otherwise. So, continuing on. Continuing on. I just thought I'd throw that out there as a little silly little thing, but okay. The Nag Hammadi text, we've come across a lot of great information so far. Information by the apostles, the same apostles that were with Jesus, of which we only have four Gospels in the Bible. However, we find many more Gospels here. So far we've looked at the Gospel of Philip, we've looked at the Gospel of John, the secret Gospel of John. We've seen other writings that were attributed to to various writers during that time period. Now we're going to look today, we've looked at the Apocalypse of Adam. We've come to understand that the creation story that we have heard in the Bible is not completely accurate because the Bible shows us that God created the world in seven days, man came along on the sixth day, man was in the Garden of Eden, Eve came, got tricked by the serpent, told Adam, they ate the apple and off they went out of the garden. That's what we're told. However, the story fails to tell some of the other aspects like in the progression of the creation of the various realms in one of these realms down the road, um, several generations down the road, there was some sort of an incident took place and from that incident Yaldabaoth came forth, whether it was a battle that broke out, or it was a rebellion, or it was some crazy birth, whatever the case would be, Yaldabaoth came up forth. Yaldabaoth. Same as the biblical Yahweh, or Jehovah. Um, same guy, same story that's connected in with the Mesopotamian story of Enlil and Enki, and Apsu, and Anu. So here we have similar stories that are all dealing with extraterrestrials, beings off of this world. We have a world that was created by a being that is considered an imperfect being. So that's the situation we're in. Now we've got these bodies, which were created as traps, in order to trap the Spirit of God in there. But ha-ha, Yaldabaoth was fooled because we're not trapped in here. We just reside in here at the moment. Jesus was one of the teachers who came along to show us that we're not trapped in here and how we free ourselves from the ignorance that we attained when we got trapped by Yaldabaoth. And the ironic part is that here we have the Old Testament, which is being followed by Jews, Christians, and Muslims. And in the Old Testament, they are following along with the story of a being who is an imperfect being an ignorant being that created a world out of ignorance and was rebelling against the one true God of the entirety. So the rebel is the one who created us. Maybe that rebel is sometimes referred to as the devil or Lucifer or Satan. That's the one who has controlled and created humankind. So it's a little bit of a mix. The Bible's not going to tell that exact story. But we've heard the story and over and over and over now through these tablets and these texts to know that something is going on that we need to pay attention to and once we find out what the truth is it definitely sets us free because the archons of which Yaldabaoth, Yahweh was chief archon they're talked about all the time in these Nag Hammadi texts as opposed to the New Testament or the Old Testament we don't hear about those yet they were a very important part of the teachings so that is a little summary of everything that we've kind of been learning through the Nag Hammadi, certainly what I've been learning through this process. Today I'm going to begin with the next text here, and I've chosen the Sophia, or Wisdom, of Jesus Christ. After he rose from the dead, his twelve disciples and seven women continued to be his followers, and went to Galilee onto the mountain called Divination and Joy. When they gathered together and were perplexed about the underlying reality of the universe and the plan and the holy providence and the power of the authorities, and remember when it talks about the power of the authorities, this is where they're talking about the archons. Archons, rulers, authorities are all names they use. 
So they're wondering about the plan of the universe, the providence, the power that these authorities have, about everything the Savior is doing with them, and in the secret of his holy plan. So all this plan appears to be dealt a plan to deal with these authorities, those who have hijacked humanity down here. So the Savior is doing everything with them in secret of his holy plan. The Savior appeared not in his previous form, but in the invisible spirit. And his likeness resembles a great angel of light. But his resemblance I must not describe. No mortal flesh could endure it, but only pure, perfect flesh, like that which he taught us about on the mountains called of the olives in Galilee. And he said, Peace be to you, my peace I give to you. And they all marveled and were afraid. The Savior laughed and said to them, What are you thinking about? Are you perplexed? What are you searching for? Philip said, For the underlying reality of the universe and the plan. The Savior said to them, I want you to know that all men are born on earth from the foundation of the world until now, being dust, while they have inquired about God, who he is and what he is like, have not found him. Now the wisest among them have speculated from the ordering of the world and its movements, but their speculation has not reached the truth, for it is said that the ordering is directed in three ways, by all the philosophers, and hence they do not agree. For some, they say about the world that is directed it by itself, others that it is providence that it directs it, others that it is fate, but it is none of these. Again, of the three voices I have just mentioned, none is close to the truth, and they are from man. But I, who came from infinite light, I am here, for I know him, light, that I might speak to you about the precise nature of the truth. For whatever is from itself is a polluted life, it is self-made. Providence has no wisdom in it, and faith, fate does not discern. But to you it is given to know, and whoever is worthy of knowledge will receive it. Whoever has not been begotten by the sowing of unclean rubbing, but by first who was sent, for he is an immortal in the midst of the mortal men. Matthew said to him, Lord, no one can find the truth except through you, therefore teach us the truth. The Savior said, He who is ineffable. No principle knew him, no authority, no subjugation or any creation from the foundation of the world until now, except the alone, and any one whom he wants to make revelation through him, who is from the first light. From now on I am the great Savior, for he is immortal and eternal. Now he is eternal, having no birth, for everyone who has birth will perish. He is unbegotten, having no beginning, for everyone who has a beginning has an end. Since no one rules over him, he has no name, for whoever has a name is the creation of another. He is amenable, he has no human form, for whatever has a human form is the creation of another. And he resembles, and he has a semblance of his own, not like what you have seen and received, but a strange semblance that surpasses all things, and is better than the universe. He looks to every side and sees itself from itself, since it is infinite. He is ever incomprehensible. He is imperishable and has no likeness to anything. He is unchanging good. He is faultless. He is eternal. He is blessed. While he is not known, he is ever knows himself. He is immeasurable. He is untraceable. He is perfect, having no def, def, deficit. He is imperishably blessed. He is called the Father of the Universe. Philip said, Lord, how then did he appear to the perfect ones? The perfect Savior said to him, Before anything is visible of those that are visible, the majesty and the authority are in him, since he embraces the whole of the total mentalities. Well, nothing embraces him, for he is all mind, and he is thought in considering and reflecting and rationaling power. They all equal powers, they are all sources of the totalities, and their whole race from the first to the last was in foreknowledge of that, the infinite unbegotten Father. Thomas said to him, Lord, Savior, why did these come to be, and why were these revealed? The perfect Savior said, I came from the infinite, that I might tell you all things. Spirit who is, and was the begetter, who had the power of a begetter, and forms, givers nature, 
that the great wealth that was hidden in him be revealed. Because of his mercy and his love, he wished to bring forth fruit by himself, that he might not enjoy his goodness alone, but that other spirits of the unwavering generation might bring forth body and fruit, glory and honor and imperishableness and his infinite grace that his treasure might be revealed by self-begotten God, the Father of every imperishableness, and those that came to be afterwards. For they had yet to come to visibility, now a great difference exists among the imperishables. He called out, saying, Whoever has ears to hear about the in infinities, let him hear. And I have addressed those who are awake. Still he continued and said, Everything that came from the perishable will perish, since it came from the perishable. But whatever came from the imperishableness does not perish, but becomes imperishable. So many men went astray because they had not known the difference, and they died. Mary said to him, Lord, how then how will we know that? The perfect Savior said, Come, you from invisible things to the end of those that are visible, and the very emanation of thought will reveal to you how faith in those things that are not visible was found in those that are visible those that belong to the unbegotten Father. Whoever has ears, let him hear. The Lord of the universe is not called Father, but Forefather, the beginning of those that will appear. But he, the Lord, is the beginningless Father. Seeing himself within himself in a mirror, he appeared resembling himself, but his likeness appeared as divine, self-father and as confronter and confronted ones, first existent unbegotten Father. He is indeed of equal age with the light, and is before him, but is not equal to him in power. And afterward he was rewarded. He revealed the whole multitude of confronting self-begotten ones, equal in age and power, being in glory and without number, whose race is called the generation over whom there is no kingdom. For the one in whom you yourselves have appeared from these men, and that whole multitude over which there is no kingdom, is called sons of unbegotten father. God, Savior, God of men, whose likeness is with you. Now he is the unknowable, who is full of ever imperishable glory and ineffable joy. They are all at rest in him, ever rejoicing in ineffable joy, in his unchanging glory and meaningless jubilation. This was ever heard or known among all the eons in their worlds until now. Matthew said to him, Lord, Savior, how is man revealed? He said, the perfect Savior said, I want you to know that he who appeared before the universe is in infinity, self-grown, self-construed father, being full of shining light and effable in the beginning, when he decided to have his likeness become a great power, immediately the principle or the beginning of that light appeared as, imid, as immortal, androgynous man, that through the immortal, androgynous man that might attain their salvation and awaken from forgetfulness, through the interpreter who was sent, who is with you until the end of the poverty of the robbers. And his consort is the great Sophia, whom from the first was destined for, in him for union by self-begotten Father from immortal man, who appeared as first in divinity and kingdom of the Father, who is called man, self-father, revealed this. And he created a great Aeon, whose name is Ogdod, for his own majesty. He was given great authority, and he ruled over the creation of poverty. He created gods and angels and archangels, myriads without number, for retinue from that light and the tri-male spirit, which is the Sophia, her consort. From, for from this God originated divinity and kingdom. Therefore, he was called God of gods, king of kings. First man has his unique mind within and thought, just as it is his thought, and considering, reflecting, rationaling power. All the attributes that exist are perfect and immortal. In retrospect and imperishableness they are indeed equal, but in respect to power they are different, like indifference between father and son, and son and thought, and the thought and the remainder. As I said earlier, among the things that were created, the monad is first. And after everything, all that was revealed appeared from his power, and from what was created all that fashioned appeared, from what was fashioned appeared what was formed, from what was formed, what was named. Thus came the difference among the unbegotten ones from the beginning to the end. All right, I'm going to stop right there. We'll pick up with Bartholomew tomorrow.
This is from the Sophia of Jesus Christ. All right, the article here over at N5D I want to show you today is called Opening the Chakras. We talk about the chakras quite a bit. So whenever we can find more information about them or just, and it's always the same, it's just a good reminder. These chakra meditations use mudras, which are special hand positions to open chakras. The mudras have the power to send more energy to particular chakra. To enhance the effect, sounds are chanted. These sounds are from the Sanskrit letters. When chanted, they cause a resonation in your body that you can feel at the chakra that they are meant for. The pronunciation, keep in mind that. So the A is pronounced ah, the M is pronounced ling. Do a meditation for 7 to 10 breaths. Chant the sound several times each breath, three times. Check out these recommendations on working with the chakras. Okay, here we have a nice good video, 3 minutes 32 seconds. So it talks about the root chakra. Put the tips of the thumb and the index finger, let them touch. Concentrate on the root chakra. The spot between the genitals and the anus, chant the sound, olam. The sacral chakra. Put your hands in your lap, palms on top of one another. Left hand underneath its palm touching the back and the fingers of the right hand. Tips of the thumbs should be gently touching. Concentrate on the sacral chakra at the sacral bone in the lower back. Chant VAM. Navel chakra. Put your hands before your stomach, slightly below your solar plexus. Let the fingers join at the tops, all the way pointing away from you. Cross the thumbs. It is important to straighten out the fingers. Concentrate on the navel chakra below the spine. It is a bit above the navel. Chant the sound RAM. Heart chakra. Sit cross-legged. Let the tips of your index finger and thumb touch. Put your left hand on your left knee and your right hand, right hand in the front or lower part of the breastbone so it is a bit above the solar plexus. Concentrate on the heart chakra at the spine level with the heart. Chant the sound YAM. Throat chakra. Cross the fingers on the inside of your hands. Without the thumb, let the thumbs touch at the tops and pull them slightly up. Concentrate on the throat chakra at the base of the throat. Chant the sound HAM. Third eye. Put your hands before the lower part of your breast. The middle fingers are straight and touch at the tops pointing forward. The other fingers are bent. Bended and touch of the upper two phalanges. The thumbs point towards you and top of the touch at the tops. Concentrate on the third eye chakra slightly above the point between the eyebrows. Chant OM or OM. And finally the crown chakra. Put your hands before your stomach. Let the ring fingers point up touching their tops. Cross the rest of your fingers with the thumb. Left thumb underneath the right. Concentrate on the crown chakra at the top of your head. Chant the sound NING. Okay, and there you go. So these are various meditations you can use. Again, you have a nice good video to show you these things. Here's the chakra, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet or white. Right? Very good. It's always good to, you know, work with the chakras. Because remember, everything is energy. And because it's all energy... We are beings that are receptors of energy. The more that we learn to work with the energy that we have, guess what? The more efficient we become. Makes pretty much sense, right? Learn how to use the system better. Basically, we're all learning how to use this human body better and to use the energy centers within it, kind of like filling up a car with gas. All right, here's a message for today. It's from Hilarion. Hilarion. February 15th through the 22nd, 2015, by Marlene Swetlashoff. Hilarion. Beloved ones, you have the power to create wonderful new realities in your life. If you have been feeling stuck in a place where the personal plans you have made are concerned, then it is important to remember that your vision and intention must be clear and defined with no inner conflicts rising to the surface. With love and patience aimed at yourself, with focus and determination, the new start you are aiming for is achievable. Give yourselves the time, loyalty, and effort that you deserve and stay strong, 
determined and consistent on the path and direction you wish to proceed. You are on the right path and you have the ability to choose the actions that honor it. In the due course of time, you will see and experience the results that you have been working to achieve. Sometimes, you may need to be more flexible and open, to change what is not working. Try another approach, be like the river that comes to a mountain and flows around it. As the cosmic energies continue to do their work, remember that you are in the process of a deep and beautiful change, a transformation into a new way of being and this change can sometimes be a painful one. You are required to let go of all the old patterns of thought and behavior that no longer serve the vision you are seeking to bring into manifestation in your life and this is where some of you are floundering. No matter how comfortable your life has been, in order to move forward into the new version of yourselves, it sometimes requires sacrifice. Go within, for this is where clarity is found and try to determine which thoughts and which expressions need to be transformed into more positive and life-affirming ones ones that are conducive to the path you have set before you. You are on the greatest adventure of your lives and it is happening in this moment of now. As you step into new territory, have faith that you will be safe and provided for. You are never left alone to walk your new path, there are always unseen friends walking with you. All that is required is an open heartfelt request for assistance and then it gives permission for these unseen friends and guides to assist you. You will receive valuable insights, and synchronicities will appear often, bringing you what you need to know and experience, which will expand your thinking in ways that will empower you. Each of you has the ability to rise above all the challenges you encounter in life, both mentally and emotionally. This is how you open to your true and unique potential. As you continue to go where no one has gone before, stay centered and balanced, Give to yourselves what is required in each moment which will nurture and support you. Do not be afraid to speak your truth when it becomes necessary. Often by expressing how you feel, you give new perspective and open new doors to the people around you that they could not see before. They begin to ponder on the truths you have presented and they accept these truths. Many times you have been afraid to speak your truth and now this is changing for as you follow your own inner guidance and heart promptings others see the wisdom you have offered them. You have a lot of wisdom to offer and others will seek your counsel as you continue to speak your truth. With the ever-increasing intensity of the energies now permeating the Earth's atmosphere, you are opening up your powers of perception and you are beginning to experience a heightened awareness of other people's thoughts and this gives you an intuitive understanding of their motives and intentions. This is an ability that will require some adjustments so that you do not react to everything that you discern. Become the observer of your own feelings when you are around others and this will become a barometer that you can use to navigate through your communications and relations with others. Always listen to your own soul's promptings and all will be well. Your added insight will help you to transform your relationships in new and positive ways. Always honor yourself for the truth that you carry. Value yourself and the unconditional love that you embody. Until next week. I am Hyla Ryan. Alright, good message of change from Hyla Ryan, or Hilarion, however you pronounce it. Here is the message from the Warrior of the Light, the next passage in the book. For the Warrior of Light, there are no abstractions. Everything is concrete and everything is meaningful. He does not sit comfortably in his tent observing what is going on in the world. He accepts each challenge as an opportunity to transform himself. Some of his companions spend their lives moaning about their lack of choice or passing comment on the decisions made by other people. The warrior, however, transforms his thinking into action. Sometimes he chooses the wrong goal and pays the price for his mistake without complaint. At others, he swerves from the path and wastes a great deal of time only to end up back where he started, but the warrior never allows himself to be discouraged. All right, good message, you know. We we all have our moments where we get going, then we slow down, we get going, we slow down. You know, it certainly would be nice if there was one particular objective in a time frame. That's what's nice about sports. You know, the game's going to be at the end of the week. You have an objective, you work all week towards it. Here in life, life just goes on and on and on. We don't have these, you know, weekly things we unless we set them up for ourselves. So we have the challenges of day-to-day -day life. 
encouraging ourselves on days when we feel discouraged and you know moving through the path every day and going through the challenges sometimes it is like groundhog's day but it does have a purpose because we do become stronger and we learn more about ourselves so we just need to keep on keeping on that brings us to our meditation for today close your eyes take a deep breath exhale take another deep breath exhale again and another deep breath and exhale imagine yourself walking along the path and as you do you're activating all of the chakras starting with the bottom of the spine imagine the color red and imagine the energy from the earth drawing itself up and connecting with this lower chakra that helps keep you grounded to the earth and then above that chakra we have the chakra in the belly button it's orange in color this is the chakra that deals with the emotional body so imagine the color orange and just feel the emotions within that area and let the energy rise up higher just below the rib cage to the solar plexus and there imagine the color yellow and feel the energy of this intellectual body and then let the energy raise up higher from that chakra to the heart chakra imagine the color green this is the chakra of heart the chakra of love feel the love from the chakra and then feel the energy moving up higher to the throat this is the center of communication. Imagine the color blue. And let the energy move up higher yet to the third eye, which is right between the two eyebrows. Imagine the color indigo. This is the center where we see through the dimensions of space and time. And then let the energy move up higher to the crown chakra, the top of the head see the color violet as the light moves continuing upward it becomes bright white and continues into the cosmos and feel your connection to the cosmos and to the earth and know that you are a child of both the earth and the cosmos and despite the lessons of the earth there are many things for us to learn and though the objective is to move closer to God and to move from the physical while we are in the physical there are things for us to learn as well and to express for if not we would not even be here so our very presence here brings us an understanding that we are where we are supposed to be So while here we learn the lessons by being open to the ways in which to use energy. And we understand that moving through the world expressing kindness and love, positivity and faith will all move us along the path in smooth, easy ways. But using energy in the opposite makes it more challenging. So we choose faith and love and positivity so as you walk through the world just allow all the positive words of the world just to move through you and just see what kind of words and ideas you come up with as you move through the world and just remind yourself about positivity remind yourself about love and faith and look for as many examples as you can find today there's a lot of darkness and challenges out there but there's a lot of good so let's look for the good let's look for the positive let's look for the love and I know that when we do we shall find the good the positive and the love that we can bring it forward so it shines even brighter so let the subconscious mind continue on that journey of seeking and seeing and let's bring the conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. 
and one coming back to the present moment, happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale. And open your eyes. And that is it for today. Thank you very much for being here. The links are available for everything we went over for today so that you can follow along, maybe read ahead. We'll continue on tomorrow with the Sophia of Jesus Christ. In the meantime, have an awesome day. Look for the positive. Look for the good. Look for the faith. It's all out there. We'll just keep finding it and bringing it forward. That's the best way that we can do. And we'll just laugh. Let's just laugh at all of the nonsense that's out there. Because that's all it is. And when we get too serious about it, it just makes us angry and upset. It brings up emotions we don't want. If we laugh, we'll find the humor in it. Maybe that's what it's all about. Finding the humor in all the stupid things that we do. Anyway, that's it. I'll be back tomorrow. Have an awesome day. I love you. Keep loving each other. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.